following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the November 1st. Can you believe it? November 1st, folks. This is the November 1st thoughtful Thursday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes. Thanks so much for joining me, folks. I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with those tools that we need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go take a look at one of our tools. This is the tool, and this is a tool kind of needed, I would think, around these times, especially up in the Northeast. This is called building exceptional relationships because things are a little tense up there with gas shortages, with the electricity being out, everything you would expect. You know, all of us in Florida here who have experienced, you know, multiple hurricanes know exactly what they are going through up there. But this is the tool called building exceptional relationships. Now, Building exceptional relationships, folks, boils down to really four fundamental things. That's the cool thing. So you might want to take notes and write these down. Element number one, in order to build an exceptional rela a relationship, is if you want someone, if you want to really touch someone, what you want to do is you want to express sincerity from the heart. Express sincerity from the heart. When you try to impress someone, what you're doing is you're building a gulf, much like the Gulf of Mexico, but when you express, folks, what you do is you build a bridge. And it's all about building bridges. Always express versus impress. Element number two, folks, in order to build exceptional relationships, positive influence. Positive influence can have an incredible effect on your life. But so can negative influence. Both will take you somewhere. But only one will take you in the direction you truly wish to go. Element number three, if you're full of ideas, folks, Pour them out. That's what we do here each and every day at TFNN. We pour out our ideas. In fact, we suggest that you give us a call and you pour out your ideas as well. As you do, more ideas will be poured into you. This, I can promise you, folks, there is a never-ending stream of ideas. You want new ideas? Pour out the old ones. Element number four for building exceptional relationships. If you want something badly enough, you've got to pay for it. You need to write that one down because so many folks are looking for things for free. If you want to really, if you really want something bad enough, you need to pay for it. Why? Because the kind of person paying for it will make you. If you pay for something, folks, you will pay attention. That much I know. Always express versus impress. Choose to be a positive influence, folks. Pour out your ideas and pay for the things that you want and you will build exceptional relationships. Let's go take a look at these markets out here. We've got the uh, futures are up. We've got the Dow futures up about 19 right now. The ES Mini up one and a quarter. That's what we're looking at on my screen here. Trading out at 1408. If you are watching us on Tiger TV, perhaps you're listening to us on a mobile device. Maybe you don't have electricity, you can't listen to us on your computer. So that's a beautiful thing. Don't forget these shows here are always archived. This show is archived on Channel 9, so you can always catch that just simply by going to the homepage of TFNN.com. You'll be able to take a look at the uh, charts that I have up on the uh, screen here. And certainly, my plan is to be able to teach you something uh, during the next hour or so. If we take a look at the NASDAQ futures, that's up about nine points right now. Russell 2000, pretty much flat, down 50 cents out there. King dollar, very flat, down uh, two ticks. You've got gold up four bucks, trading out at 17.23. Silver up 21 cents. Silver has been strong. High ho silver, in fact, so strong, we're going to be giving out a half ounce of silver all day today, each hour. For the next nine hours here at TFNN, tomorrow, one ounce of silver each hour. So we've got light, sweet, crude. So, and if you haven't had a chance to sign up for that, go to the homepage of TFNN.com. It is not too late. Go sign up. You'll see the Great Panther Silver Giveaway. So you want to be able to do that. Uh, that's through the rest of this week here we'll, where we will be giving out silver each hour. You've got uh, over in uh, Germany. Well, we just simply take a look around the world. Everything is green. Our markets will be green today as well. So get out your paintbrush. You had uh, over in Asia last night. Everything up. You had the Nikkei up 18 points. Not really a big deal there. You had the Shanghai up 37 points. That was up 1.7%. Not only was it up, there was another sign of strength. There's been three signs of strength to the upside in the uh, Shanghai. Hmm. 
something to think about. You had the Hang Seng up 180 points. That was up eight tenths of a percent. This morning over in uh, Germany, they're up about seven tenths of a percent, up 53 points. We showed that chart yesterday. We're going to go take a look at it today. It wants to uh, go up for the consolidation. It wants to move up to the consolidation highs. The FTSE up as well today, up 46 points. That's up eight tenths of a percent. Really, the FTSE has been traveling sideways. We're going to take a look at all these charts and anything else that you'd like. All you have to do is give us a call at 877-927-6648. Actually, in the pre-market here, not a lot really happening. To the downside, you had Barrick Gold miss their numbers. ABX is the ticker symbol. They closed out last night at $40.50. They're the leader dollar-wise to the downside. Trading out right now at thirty-seven thirty-six. Their earnings per share sixty-two cents versus a buck thirty-six. Uh, revenues three point four billion versus three point nine seven uh, billion out there, and so they are trading lower this morning. The next uh, lowest dollar-wise item on the way down: Cirrus Logic. They closed at forty seventy-eight. They're trading out at thirty-eight eighty-four. Let's see here if I see their revenue numbers. They did. Uh, Net revenue, 193 million versus 101, so they beat their numbers. Net revenue, net income, 33 million versus 11.2. Must be a, a guidance issue that they've got out here because they are trading down, what is it, 38, 39, about, uh, about two bucks this morning here. You've got the market vectors, trucks, trust the, uh, uh, GDX for the uh, gold miners out there, uh, Trading off just about uh, 60 cents here this morning to the upside. You've got JDA Software, JDAS, the ticker symbol. They closed at 38.15. Uh, what did they announce? Uh, some strong earnings out here. Let me see if I can find those here real quickly. Uh, doesn't pop up on my screen. Nonetheless, closed at 38.15, trading out at 44.78. You got Ellie Mae Clampett, Ellie Mae Inc., actually E L L I, the uh, mortgage. Uh, uh, e, uh, mortgage uh, Entity out there closed at 25 bucks. Uh, they are trading out right now at 25.50. So that's pretty much what we've got going to the upside and to the uh, downside. Let's go take a look at the ES Mini now. We've got the 10-minute chart up on the screen. It reached a little well. What we're taking a look at here, folks. I've got the uh, one of my tools that is turned on here. If you're taking a look at the top portion of the uh, chart, what you're looking at is nothing more than retracements and expansions of swing points. So what you can see here is the ES Mini got up to sweet 618. That's the 0.618 retracement between a swing point high, in this case here, and a swing point low. The swing point high that you'll be looking at happens to be 520 in the morning on October 31st. That was yesterday. Hopefully everybody had a, a great Halloween out there and not too many uh, tooth problems. And everybody got the their candy bar, whatever that candy is, but you know the big one. If not, you should have gone out and bought yourself one. And anyway, let's go take a look at you. Take a look at the swing point high at 5:20 in the morning. That was 14:18.25, all the way down to the low that was put in at uh, 9:30 uh, last night. That low was 13.98.50. If you went ahead and you took your uh, measurement tool, you went from the high to the low. You would see that the 0.618 area is going to end up right around the 14. 10 level. That's where the ES Mini got up to. Just simply has paused a bit as it was getting up there, was getting in. This is a 10 minute chart that we're looking at. So we're looking at some ultra short time frames. But as it got up there, got into a little bit of a overbought condition, just simply traveling sideways here before the market opens. And if we take a look at and so where is this going? Well, this is, let's go take a look at a longer term chart out here. Let's go, when I say longer term, let's just simply go up to the 30 minute chart. Then we'll go take a look at the uh, daily chart out here. Now what the ES Mini did this morning is number one, it got up through an area of resistance. Uh, that resistance really being right here, I'll draw the line across the uh, screen. Uh, so that you can watch this on Tiger TV, somewhere right around the 14.05 and a quarter-ish range, just call it 14.05, even Steven out there. And you can see that the ES Mini got above that area right now, just simply completing an A to B equals CD up as it uh, moves into a overbought uh, condition out here. We'll see that so far what it's done this morning, 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD on the way up, I don't think that this is done. The uh, bulls have not checked in for work. I believe that they are on the other side of the bridge. The bulls did not carpool together to get into uh, New York City. That's going to be a problem trying to keep the market down because the bulls, they heard 
what the uh, what the uh, mayor said. And they said carpool, and you had all kinds of bulls volunteering, so they all got in trucks. They made it down to the New York Stock Exchange. They're going to push this market higher here today. Right now, what you can see is the .618 of a larger move. Now we're taking a look at a larger move of the ES Mini. That's from the swing point high that came in at 5.30 in the morning yesterday. That swing point high being the same one, I guess, that we're looking at out at the 14.18.25. This gives you a little bit larger picture here. 14.10.75, in essence, would have been the exact point uh, 618. I expect we'll see the ES Mini make a run for the 14.14 level. That is the uh, sweet 786, that's the next level of retracement above the uh, 618 level. That's what it looks like the ES Mini wants to do on the 30-minute chart to me. If we go take a look at the uh, daily out here, let's go take a look at the daily chart of the ES Mini. Let's go see what it is doing. Now, you remember, remember, we've got to take a, uh, take a, with a grain of salt, really, the trading session on Monday and Tuesday. That would be this little hammer candle here on October 29th. And, you know, I love hammer candles. Unfortunately, this one here I can't adopt because it was just simply overnight trading. It was a relatively illiquid market. It was easy to be pushed around, and although I would love for that to truly be the hammer candle out there, I discount that candle as well as the uh, candle here on the uh, 30th. In fact, I'm not going to delete them on my, uh, on my screen here, but when it comes to uh, trading or getting a feel for the, uh, what the market is communicating to me, those two days just simply I have eliminated uh, from uh, my view. If we do take a look at uh, yesterday, really just a kind of a sideways day. Now, it really, you should have expected that. Why? Well, because you have insurance companies that uh, maybe had to just simply decide to uh, go ahead and get rid of some positions to cover some of the uh, claims that uh, will be coming. Of course, the, you know, the, the damage that's done out there is going to be far more than the uh, claim side of what's going on because so much of the damage is flooding damage. And a lot of folks, you know, your general liability policy out there, folks, unfortunately, doesn't cover floods. Better to make sure a tree falls on your house than to deal with a flood. Hmm, something to think about. 877-927-6648. Got the uh, Dow up about 24 points right now. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll 
show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, everyone. And uh, so good news in uh, Manhattan. Con Ed says that they're going to have the uh, power restored, should have all the power restored uh, in Manhattan by Saturday, perhaps uh, sometime uh, Friday. So that is some uh, good news out there. Other good news, you had uh, jobless claims fall by uh, 9,000. Uh, that's down to 363,000. The ADP report was out earlier. I believe uh, they added 158,000 jobs. The bad news is they expected 162. Uh, Chrysler vehicle sales were up 10%. Sounds good. However, the expectation was 15%. Exxon Mobil. Uh, producing almost about $10 billion in profits for the quarters. ExxonMobil uh, did uh, $2.09 uh, per share versus buck ninety six, and they're buying back $5 billion in stock, or up to $5 billion in stock. We'll go take a look at that chart, but ExxonMobil trading up near its highs. Hmm, something to think about. Uh, they got the uh, apogee, the lunar phase. That is when the uh, moon is furthest from us. That comes in this morning here at 11.30 sharp uh, in uh, uh, Ford territory. Ford had a big day yesterday. We'll go take a look at that chart. Alan Mullally, I believe that's how you properly say his last name, the CEO. He is uh, expected to stay through at least the year of 2014. On our screen right now, we've got the Russell 2000 futures and that little black horizontal line that you're looking at. That used to be an area of resistance turned into an area of support, and now it's an area of resistance trying to be taken out here uh, today. This morning, I expect that we will see that line get taken out. Then it's going to have one more area of resistance that it has to uh, travel to. That is just simply this diagonal line out here. That's a diagonal trend line coming off of the June 5th low. Again, we're taking a look at the uh, Russell 2000 uh, futures uh, contract out there. Actually, let's see, the uh, June 4th was 728.50. And it, yeah, so really coming off of the June 4th low out there. And uh, so, you know, once you break through a area of support, what the market will do, it's just normal for it to. Now, in this case here, this could be a real break because you had the market moving to the upside. It broke the trend line to the downside. Uh, and we'll see whether or not this was a false break to the downside. How will we know? Well, if it breaks back inside that trend line, that is your indication that it was a false break to the downside. If it goes back up and it tests it, which it should do, which it will almost always do. It's why you want to make sure that you understand channel lines, trend lines. Those are two different tools out there, but you want to understand those because uh, what markets will typically do is go back and they'll test those areas of either old support or old resistance out here. 
And so the Russell 2000, one of the uh, indexes that we should be following, we're just simply taking a look at the uh, futures contract right now. Uh, if we go take a look at the NQ, that has been the uh, dog in the doghouse, the truly dog in the doghouse. That has been leading the uh, market uh, down. Yesterday, uh, continuing with that move, you can see that trend line here uh, was broken yesterday. Yesterday, the trend line was uh, very close to, uh, I would say it was touched in my line of work here, as the NASDAQ futures got up to the level of 2676. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, now you can see me here. I'll blow it up on the screen here. And it looks to me like that area was touched. It was rejected, moved lower. However, from a selling standpoint, what you've got is you've got the market, you know, at or near oversold levels. So when you're at it, you know, what you'd prefer to see is not that red line along the bottom. Be so, I have such a, a low readout out there uh, because uh, what the market is uh, trying to do here, trying to bounce, it has not taken out the uh, full moon low, which we're going to identify here as a low that came in. Well, we'd have to do that on the uh, as of uh, Friday uh, out there. Again, I'm not really paying much attention to the October 30th and October 29th candles uh, in any of the uh, markets, in any of the uh, futures markets. Now, that's not the same as we take a look around the world, because around the world, you know, no problem out there. You had pretty much the same liquidity. So if we go take a look at the uh, DAX here in uh, Germany, we go take a look at the DAX here. You can see trading up near its session highs, up eight tenths of a percent right now. That's up 57 bucks. When we were on the air yesterday, we took a look at the DAX. The DAX here, we were showing this in a sideways horizontal consolidation. Uh, as you know, 60, 65 plus percent of the time, uh, these consolidations resolve themselves in the direction that they came from. In this case here, the DAX certainly coming off of the bottom. It's back inside its longer term trading channel here, this price channel. You can see it was nothing more than a false break to the downside in what was one of the weaker indexes out there. The DAX wants to travel up to its highs yesterday, made a point six one eight, really almost to the point uh, seven eight six level, backed off only backed off for a few hours this morning, picking up the uh, ball and moving higher. 73.19 is where it's headed, is where it's at. It's headed to the 74.40-ish range. 877-927-6648. We get back, we'll go see how these markets are going to pop, and then we're going to Marie in Erie, Pennsylvania, to take a look at uh, WPRT as the uh, ticker symbol, WPRT, happens to be Westport Innovations. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides 
provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow up 67 points right now. S&P up five, uh, composite up 11, uh, small caps uh, just getting out of the gate, waking up a little late, up uh, 50 cents right now. Microsoft up 42 cents, Intel up 18, Google up a buck and change, Cisco up 10 pennies, Apple up a buck 67 after losing its way, making a, a doji candle yesterday. Uh, you've got pop into the upside, JDA software, JDA, yes, the ticker symbol up 17%. That's up six bucks and change. Sourcefire, F-I-R-E is the ticker symbol. They're up 12% this morning. Visa up uh, 2%, up two bucks and change. Heartland Payments up two bucks. Signacorp up a buck 59. Kohl's up a buck 40. Cummings Inc. up uh, two bucks to the downside. Teradata Corp down seven bucks. That's down 10%. Uh, uh, ABA, uh, ABMD is a ticker symbol. AB, I'm going to say I, ABIO Med Inc. What a heck of a name out there. Well, they're, uh, get, they're down 24 percent here this morning down uh, five bucks and change salesforce innovation crm the tickle uh, ticker symbol they're off uh, three percent down four bucks uh, chart industries off uh, eight percent this morning cirrus logic down nine percent we covered that zoomy as z-u-m-z is zooming to the downside down 13 percent let's go to marie in erie pennsylvania marie thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you to this morning Oh, I'm terrific this morning. What can you tell us? How was the storm in your neck of the woods? What uh, What did you experience? Oh, uh, we had a, we had wind, but nothing uh, too severe, and some trees down, a few power outages, but hardly anything compared to what the folks uh, on the coast had. Yeah. Now, did you? Uh, now, how cold did it get? Uh, did you guys get some any snow up that way? No. Okay. No, it stayed uh, moderate. We were in the 40s. It was chilly, but it, no snow. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Glad to hear that uh, things are A-OK -okay in your neck of the woods. You wanted to take a look at Westport Innovations. Tell me what it is you're doing and how I can help. 
Well, I, I've been wanting to pick some up, and okay. um, I noticed that they, uh, they took a nosedive yesterday but seemed to reject it, and I was wondering, um, do I need to have that come back to its low of yesterday to look at a buy if it's on a lower volume or wait for a real sign of strength? Or well, how long have you been looking? waiting for this? Um, well, I had actually gotten into it... Um, uh, last month, uh, okay, near its low there, and wrote it up for a while, and then got out. Okay, great. I wasn't satisfied with uh, the volume. Yeah, it. yeah, absolutely. And it did didn't it did not have much volume as it was making its uh, highs out there. And yes, you're right. Uh, Westport Innovation opening up yesterday opened up at uh, twenty five ninety seven, so it gapped down, and the bull stepped in and pushed it up all the way. It closed at twenty eight oh three. The high was twenty eight. 07 out here. So your question is really a great question. Now, ideally, the best place to uh, potentially to step into this thing, although it hasn't really been tested, would be the uh, June 4th uh, gap up level. Uh, the low of that would be $24.31. See, right now, if this does move higher, and there was some good volume in it yesterday, you know, I think that uh, the area where you got out last time is likely the area that you would be getting out this time. So I would think that this would trade maybe into the 31-ish range, and it's at $28 right now. Uh, you know, if you were to get in here, your stop would have to be below yesterday's close, which is 25.57. So if we just call it 25. You're risking $3 to what I would say at this stage to make $3. To me, that's not a good enough reward to risk, and you haven't gotten a, a, a good enough signal just yet with regard to this wanting to truly move higher. I would prefer to see it come back. Uh, and this is just on the uh, daily chart. It's got a little untested gap here from June 5th. Uh, that low is, again, 2431. But let's, you know, and what, what we, as we take a look at this chart here, let, let me also put this on a weekly. So let's see what this is doing here on the uh, weekly chart. So it's still inside this uh, swing point, you know, from that uh, first week of uh, June and the lows there of 2193 on the weekly chart. You'd like to see uh, that get tested. Uh, you know, yesterday it did try to take out the swing point. It did have volume. You know, at a minimum, from a trade standpoint, the answer to your question is yes, at least a test of yesterday's low would be ideal. Uh, let me put this on a, a monthly chart out here, see if anything stands out. Uh, from a month, and that that week of June 8th, let me just refresh my screen here, that is a high volume week out there. So ideally, it's right around the low of that. Now, it's possible that June 5th gap up could hold. Uh, we'll go back to that on the daily chart. So you're going to want to watch the volume as that area uh, would be attacked on this. Uh, again, let me first put the uh, monthly up. And then as, so as we take a look at the monthly out here, let me refresh my screen, get some accurate uh, bars in here. Monthly not really giving me uh, much of a uh, signal here. Of course, last month was really a month of indecision. And, uh, and if you take a look at that uh, candle, I would have to say that the bears had more control than the uh, bulls uh, did during the month of October. So that says to me, okay, it still wants to push a little bit lower. So again, back to the daily chart on this. Uh, if it comes into the uh, gap with uh, more than uh, 6.5 million shares, uh, then this will go down and it will test the low, which would be the June 4th uh, level. That's at 2193. And you know, yesterday, in essence, it was pushing lower uh, with, uh, you know, with 2 million shares, so not tremendous uh, volume out there. So my opinion right now, it's at a stage where it's not a great trade because the reward to risk just doesn't make sense. It's just a one-to-one -one at okay. this stage. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I thought maybe the reversal of yesterday was uh, positive. It is positive. You know, there's no question. Yesterday was a bullish day for the stock because it took a ton of energy. Let me just put this on a 10-minute chart here. It took a ton of energy, and it was all in the open, though. It was in the first 10 minutes mm -hmm. that this equity pushed lower. Uh, and so it does say, I mean, that's quite, on a 10-minute chart, that's quite a hammer candle uh, down there uh, that says that uh, 2557 should be an area where price would uh, would be rejected. Now, I don't know what, uh, since you follow the stock, was there some kind of news that came out yesterday? Oh, they had, they... Uh, they have earnings? Warning. Yeah, yeah, they're warning that there's uh, going to be a problem with, uh, uh, they're lowering their expectations. Are they? Okay. Well, yeah. I will tell you, every, uh, let's, everybody kind of, it wasn't Hammer Ken, but everybody dumped out of that stock, you know, between 930 and 940. It did 419,000 shares uh, during that uh, first 10 minute uh, session, and the total volume yesterday was, uh, you know, 2 million shares. So, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's best for you to just sit on the sideline and yeah. wait on this one, okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thanks for calling. All right. Uh, if we go take a look at uh, what's popping and what is uh, dropping out here, let's go back and take a look at Apple. I did say Apple had a, a day of indecision out there. Why was it indecision? Well, if we take a look at the, there was, you had the, it was tr truly an equilibrium of price out there between the uh, bulls and bears. If we talk about a tug of war, yesterday is a, uh, this doji candle was a perfect tug of war candle. If you take a look at it here, it opened at a price of 594.88, closed at 595.32, and uh, what Apple was doing was it was making a one to one point six one eight A to B equals C D down. Now there's several A to B equals C D patterns here, but if we take a look at the first pattern out here, our A point happens to be well. Let me just redraw it for you and grab the right actual uh, swing point. The high is going to be the swing point of uh, September 21st. That's my A point, 70507. Let me grab the right uh, tool now. And uh, so we've got 70507 again from September 21st. Your B point on this, your first B point, October 2nd, that low, 650, uh, 65, 22 million shares. If we go up to, uh, did a two-day retracement, gets up to October 4th. It's up to the level of 674.25. You can see that reta retracement there, very shallow, telling us we want to do more than a 1 to 1. A to B equals C, D. Uh, what did it do? Well, yesterday it gets down to the 1 to 1.618. A to B equals C, D. We know that the B point was taken out. You had 22 million shares. It gapped down through it with 22.7 million shares. So volume-wise, just about even as the B point was attacked. However, that gap down uh, means a lot. And so... In fact, it means a lot in Apple. How how much does it mean? We'll take a look at the last time Apple got up to that area of October 5th. The low there was 651.28. That area was tested on the 17th with 13 million shares. Got up there. That window is still open. That means that resistance here in Apple is going to be the price point of 651.28. Yesterday, as it made a 1 to 1.618, the uh, bulls had a chance to step in. They didn't. It was a draw, an absolute uh, draw out there. We'll see if the leaves are going to continue to fall off of the apple tree here, uh, which would then go ahead and we'd see lower price in apple. That's what I mean by that little statement there. And that would take apple down to the 565 level. That's all the way back to the bottom, in essence, of the island reversal that took place between July 25th, that low 570, July 26, 570, 36, and the uh, July 27th level, 571.59. So if you get a lower close in Apple today, that is where she wants to head to. Let's go take a look at uh, some of these uh, equities here that are popping and dropping. Well, I did mention we were talking about the auto company, so let's go take a look at Ford. Ford had a uh, nice uh, day yesterday, nice sign of uh, strength in that equity. In fact, in the morning, I was looking at buying Ford out there and uh, uh, didn't, but uh, uh, it, it, it looked to me like Ford wanted to pop. I didn't realize it was going to pop like this, though. Yesterday, take a look at the volume in this. So we're going to take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern that is going to uh, complete out here. Yesterday, Ford up with 137 million shares, taking out a swing point, the B point of an A to B equals CD up. That B point, September 19th, 2012, that high, $10.66, 42 million. 42 million shares taken out with 137 million. I believe if you own Tom's book, The Art of Timing the Trade, that that is considered wide price spread with accelerated volume. That is textbook on an A to B equals CD up. So if we take a look at our A point, that's coming off of the low of August 2nd out there, $8.82. The uh, swing point high, that B point again, September 19th, $10.66. The retracement there down to a low on uh, October the 2nd out at 9 71. One to one, A to B equals CD, $11.55. Will Ford move higher than that? Well, let's go take a look at the retracement here. Let's see what kind of energy this has. The retracement, about a 50% retracement, didn't make it all the way down to the 0.618. My verdict, ding the bell, yes, Ford will move higher than 11.55. Looks like 12.05 really is its next target. And now at 11.55, as your pilot, I have to put on the uh, caution, put on your seat belts. Why? Because there is a little open gap on the way down. That is going back to April the 27th out there. That low, 11.52, uh, that has 76 million shares. So that has not been tested. That is a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD because you got 11.55. 
and uh, that's an area where you will uh, get some a little bit of uh, turbulence. Uh, we'll see if it can power through that. Maybe it will pull back uh, just a bit, but Ford, uh, this would be a, a nice uh, entry here at the uh, open of that uh, gap yesterday. If it could pull back into the uh, 1060 range, that would be a heck of a nice uh, buy out there. However, let's go take a look at the intraday chart out here. I know maybe today with Chrysler not having great news, maybe that'll help a little bit of a uh, pullback out here. Let's see, volume-wise, uh, one area where Ford could pull back to would be at 1092. Uh, but ideally, this thing would come back to its uh, breakout gap from yesterday morning. That would be at the 1060 price point. Uh, let's go take a look at JDAS software. That is uh, the leader in the uh, clubhouse, JDS JDAS up 17% this morning. Let's go take a look at the volume inside this. So you got nice volume. Wow, you've got really nice volume in this. Let me refresh this screen. I believe we were taking a look at this equity yesterday on the uh, show. Let me see here. What's the... Uh, I'm having a little bit of a data feed issue. Let me see if I can fake this thing out here and go to a time frame that matches a daily chart, 390 minutes. Let's see here. That's not really good. I hate to have to reboot everything, uh, and I'm not going to. So it's trading out at 49.50, and I don't know what's going on with my uh, little stock charts here. I guess it's a little bit of the uh, trick or treat. Uh, looks like we did have a, a gap up uh, yesterday in JDAS, but uh, I'm not so certain on this stock chart here. So we're gonna, we're, we'll, well, maybe during the next show, I'll go ahead and reboot things and. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, Fire, Source Fire out there. That is the uh, next uh, in the clubhouse. That's number two up 15, 16% up $6 and change out there. Uh, again, the ticker symbol F-I-R-E, that is Source Fire uh, up uh, healthily. Healthily, I don't think that's really a word, so we'll skip that. Uh, let me come back and find that chart again here. Uh, window, tile, vertical. Okay, Fire. So that is up, uh, gapping up this morning here with some uh, good volume in it. Uh, this thing here has had some institutional selling in it, and that's where it's going into its uh, supply line here. It'll be the first, uh, well, let's take a look at it right now. It's trading out at 49.94. Volume in this is 833,000 uh, shares here. So this is taking out its last area of us uh, of resistance without any problem. That happens to be the October 16th level. There was a little gap down there with some volume. Now, the gap down, the low of that was 47.10. So that is being taken out. The volume that it had on the way down, 3.2 million shares. Again, in the first uh, 19 minutes of trading, 855,000 shares. So this is going to have some uh, juice in it for sure. And uh, this should head up to the swing point high, which would take source fire up into the $57.98 range. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow up 86 S&P up 6, Composite up 16, Russell up 2, everything, uh, green paint is out. Get your green paint, folks. Uh, everything will be green today. We'll be right back. always taken the long view when it comes to investing but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose what if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk at direction funds we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns smart investors deserve smart alternatives find yours at directionfunds.com an investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of direction funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the direction funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC.
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks, and uh, stay tuned today. A full lineup for you. We've got the uh, Money Masters show following this show. Then we go up to uh, Basil Chapman. That's assuming that he still has uh, power. Basil, what a uh, trooper out there. Uh, Larry Pesavento today from 12 to 1, uh, Daryl Martin 1 to 2, David White 2 to 3, Ken Shree from 3 to 4, and the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. Uh, we did go along in the newsletter here this morning uh, based on uh, some indicators that I was taking a look at. And if we take a look at the markets here, you've got the Dow up 107 points. Now, the same parameters that I gave you on yesterday's show uh, work today. Uh, we were taking a look at the uh, Dow Jones uh, specifically, and it was showing you the candle pattern that is out there that's really a very powerful uh, candle pattern, even if we go ahead and let me see, we got the uh, 26, so the only day out here that I would have to delete, let me delete this bar here, uh, delete bar, there we go. We delete the bar here. What you can see here, take a look at the Dow Jones as it was moving down. Real large, wide-ranging, down-thrusting bars. You had the bears absolutely in control on October 23rd. And then, as if you sent a child into the corner for a timeout, that's exactly what the bulls did to the bears. You had these little, these little small little bodies here traveling below, quite frankly, traveling below the close of October 23rd. Actually, folks, when you see this here, it's a pretty bullish sign out there. Now, what you need is the confirmation. That is today. If you get a close above 13,213 in the Dow, it's at 13,205 right now. 
That is a very bullish candle configuration out there. That would say that the uh, Dow, not only would it come and test the uh, first level, it's got to get through these little barriers out here. Uh, and the uh, first uh, barrier is going to be this horizontal resistance line. Used to be resistance. That was uh, going back into the area of really Mario Draghi a day, but it was really on the QE3 that that level was taken out. Uh, however, that then became support. Uh, support was, uh, in essence, tested right around the October 11th time frame. Dow moved back up, came back and uh, tested it and busted through it on October 23rd. However, you're getting fairly bullish. Uh, you know, we've got to wait to see how the market here closes. But 11, uh, 13,213, that is the number on the Dow. You get a close there, and you can give it a couple of points. But you get a close there or above that, that is a very bullish configuration. It'll have to take on the level uh, somewhere right around the uh, 13,325 range. That's uh, that's that horizontal uh, resistance level. Then you're going to have your next one, which is going to be this breakout of this uh, trend line out here. I suspect that's really where it is headed. That's where it will at least be tested. And I uh, I, would, my, I suspect that now tomorrow we've got Jobs Friday. So Jobs Friday, you don't have to chase this uh, market here, folks. Uh, Jobs Friday typically results in a down move by the end of the day, maybe just kind of a flat move. We'll see what happens out there, but uh, pay attention because that is the uh, first, that's one of the signals that you are looking at, and you will only get that here at TFNN. So I'm sharing with you one of uh, Steve's trading secrets out there, and it really is all about uh, candle patterns. It's about being able to read the market. If you would like to be able to better understand candle patterns, what to look for, Go to my name on the homepage of TFNN.com. In fact, I'll go ahead and pull it up here. If you go to my name on the homepage of TFNN.com, well, I thought I would pull it up here. Let me see if I actually have it here to pull up. There we go. So here we're on the homepage of TFNN.com. All kinds of great things out there. Down towards the bottom, click on the Trader's Edge. And what you will see, if you click down a little bit further, you will see Get Steve's 6-Hour Webinar Archive. There's two of them that you really should uh, use, that you really need. Candlestick, Silent Signals, and the Speed of Trust. That's the first place I would start. And then move on to buying and selling the D-Point. If you do those two, and you get the, uh, my newsletter, that's included in the, uh, in the uh, service there. But if you go understand those two things, folks, you will save yourselves thousands and thousands of hours and thousands and thousands of dollars. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great morning. Look forward to seeing you in a few. If you're off to start your day, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Take care.